Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well, and I'm super excited to be making this video today because I get to show you all the new stuff that's coming in Luminar version 1.21.0. It is the big fall upgrade. It's got a lot of new stuff. In fact, it's got so much new stuff, it feels like it's Luminar 2.0. It's not, it's 1.21.0, but I think you're gonna love this stuff. I'm super excited and I love to share this. now. Before I jump into it, first things first, I have a beta copy. That means some things may change. I really don't think that they will, but there could be some minor changes before release date. Speaking of release date, that is October 10th, so about a week away. If you don't have it yet, there's a link down below. It is an affiliate link. They pay me a referral fee if you use that link to purchase the product. You can use coupon code GYMNEX15 to save 15% on your order. However, if you already have a pro subscription, you just get the update, so don't worry about that. And last, there's a link down below to my free 27-page ebook about Luminar Neo. So if you need help understanding how it works, how to edit, lots of ideas, tips, tricks, insights, all that stuff, it's all covered in that free ebook at the link down below. Check it out if you're interested, and if not, that's cool too. I'm still gonna be here making some videos about it. Now, speaking of videos, let's jump into this new stuff. So if you have the app and are ready to update, just click the Luminar Neo and click check for updates and then run that and you'll be able to update. Remember, when they roll out an update or an upgrade, it tends to roll out around the globe, which means everybody doesn't get it exactly the same time because they're trying to lighten the load on the servers. So just keep trying if it's not available for you yet. There's three major things that are updated with stuff underneath them. The first one is major, major, major catalog improvements. Second one is a new feature called color transfer. And the third one is color masking. I'm gonna go through all of that for you in this video. You may notice there's slightly different UI and that just because they've added and enhanced the catalog, which is bullet point number one. The app is really maturing and if you look back, nine, 12 months ago, two years ago when it started, it's come so far. And even just in the last six months with the last update, which included luminosity masking and object select masking, water enhancer AI, twilight enhancer AI, and then you layer in what's coming in this update, catalog updates, color transfer, and color masking. We're talking about an incredibly fully featured editor. I love it. Let's get going. So first things first, there is now Smart Search, which uses AI to help you identify things in your catalog. So you can just click there and it'll say search your photos. And let's say I type in the word tree. Well, I've got 700 items in all the images here. Now, now when you look something up, if there's a whole lot of them, it might take a moment. A lot of these are gonna be Madeira because we were in uh, the Fennel Forest and there's lots of trees there, but you get the point. And it's very simple and straightforward and you will see your previous searches there, you can of course clear them, which is what I've been doing with all the searches I've been uh, trying. So let's try mountain, 968 items. So again, it's gonna chug through and identify those for me and bring them up and show me all the photos that it identifies as having a mountain in it. And again, you're gonna see a lot of stuff from Madeira, but you're also gonna see Iceland and things like that. There's Sedona, more Iceland, lots of different variables here, but the point is, quickly search your library and your catalog to go find the images that you're looking for. Now, the other thing you can do is once you find all these photos of mountains, for example, I could group them and drop them into an album, which is like a virtual collection, which is separate from folders. So that's a nice thing to have. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go back into, I'll just go into this folder here. And the next thing I wanted to show you is some of the UI improvements. Now, if you look here, as you hover over the photo, you can see I've got star ratings down below and I've got the full file name. You can adjust that by clicking on this menu and clicking minimal view. So the minimal view now, unless you hover, you will see things. But otherwise, if you're not hovering, you won't see that. I'm gonna go back to the detailed view. I prefer this, you get the full file name, and if it's a raw file, it says raw. I love that. You may also notice that, of course, you have star ratings, so you can click those here in the photo, uh, or you can just hit a hotkey to, uh, to change that. So if I wanna give that a five star rating, I click the five key. If I wanna give that back to nothing, I give it a zero. All the numbers uh, that correspond to the amount of stars correlate exactly. You can also get to that uh, by right-clicking on the photo and set rating, there you go. 
And secondly, uh, you can do it if you're in the edit screen, you will notice down below, you've got star ratings here as well. So you can apply those in various different modes or views. The point is you have them and that's super helpful and useful because it's gonna help you keep track of things. Now I'm in this folder, but if you look on, I've got a bunch of different folders for different things, different projects, whatever, right? And your uh, instance of Luminar may look similar. We have different folders. In the past, they always went in based on when you created them, which is essentially chronological. But now with this button, you can, uh, adjust accordingly uh, to your taste, right? So you can do your own custom order. You can sort by folder name if you want to, and you can make these ascending or descending. I can go by photo count there, starting with zero all the way to 3021, which is still uh, all my Madeira photos from earlier this year. Uh, or custom order where you can just set it up and then drag things around. Maybe you wanna drag something like that. Maybe you wanna drag this over here. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna go back to my creation date just because I'm kind of used to looking at it that way. The point is you have the flexibility to customize to your heart's content. Now, another cool thing is you have this filtering option up here where you can go in and you can filter by lots of different things, including all of this type of information like the capture date, the edit date, but here more importantly, the camera, the focal length, the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. So let me go to all photos so that you can see that there's a lot more for it to choose from because it was doing it just in that folder. And now I'm going to go down here to camera and these are all the different photos that I've or excuse me, all the different cameras that I've shot with over the years, and I've got photos from them. So maybe I just want to find something that I shot with my Fuji, or maybe with my uh, Sony uh, A7R3. You can do that. And uh, so let's say, I, let me go ahead and do that. I'll click that. It's going to drop all those fo uh, photos into this view, but I can come in and I can layer in additional uh, search criteria. So let's say I want to find everything that's 24 millimeter. There you go. It's starting to drop that a little bit. And you can see now it says I have two filters and you can do more things. What's the aperture, what's the ISO, et cetera. Uh, and of course you can always reset filters just to go back to viewing every single thing in your catalog. Now here's another thing that everybody, including me, have been asking for for the longest time and that is virtual copies. This is the ability to virtually create a copy of the photo. It will carry the edits with it, but it doesn't take up additional hard drive space. So you're not making an actual copy of the file. That's what I used to always do. And in fact, this folder is a great example. Here is an original, that photo that I took in Madeira. And as you can see here, here's a copy. And all I did is I went to show, I, I did right click and show in Finder. And then I just made a duplicate of the photo so I could create a separate edit. So that's the old way, but now I can right click and just create virtual copy. There's also a hotkey, as you can see. And when I create virtual copy, it's going to come over here and drop that copy right there. And it's going to carry the edits with it. And there we go. There's my virtual copy with the exact same edits. Now, keep in mind that usually virtual copies are created so that you can either try different editing techniques or something like that. In this case, I already had this photo edited and I made a virtual copy, but I could come into this virtual copy and just completely reset the adjustments, revert to original, and then I could come in and edit in a different way, which is something I actually do a fair amount of time where I'll create a separate copy, a physical copy in the past. I won't do that anymore. But now with the virtual copy, I can just come in and create my own separate virtual copy and then do separate distinct edits to try out different styles, different looks, things like that. It's a huge time saver. You can also, by the way, when you're in the edit mode, you will see down here, there's a two next to that one. And that's indicating that this is the virtual copy. This is copy two versus if I go to the original and click on edit, you will see down here, there's a one. So it will distinguish those virtual copies for you by giving it that number. Also, if you're in the edit mode, you can come down here to this more menu and this and create a virtual copy there. So I can now create a virtual copy of this one, but from the editing screen, as opposed to from the catalog screen. This is something that people have been asking for for the longest time. I'm so happy that they finally did this. It's gonna save me hard drive space. It just makes it easier to edit and experiment with different kinds of editing techniques, which I'm personally a huge fan of. I think that's how you learn and that's how you get better and grow your skills is by doing that. Now, the other thing that's really cool here is you now have this film strip view. So this is down here on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and show film strip and you're gonna see all the different photos that are in the folder that I'm in. So now I can just jump over and go from photo to photo without having to go back to the catalog. I can do that straight from this editing menu. You will also notice that here I'm in that virtual copy again, and you can see the little icon here where it shows that there's a virtual copy. And then here 
is the virtual copy that was made. There's that too that you saw, but you can see it's got this little virtual copy icon there. It also shows you uh, photos that have been edited by showing you that little editing slider in the photo. So that's also a good visual cue to let you know that that photo has already been edited. So all in all, these catalog improvements are huge, just making it a better user experience for you overall, make it easier to use Luminar. And with a little bit of the UI adjustments and things like that, I think you're really going to love that. But the other stuff you're going to love are some of the new features, and that's what I want to jump into now. So I'm going to grab this photo, which I've done some editing on already. And you can either uh, minimize or keep the film strip view. I'll just keep it here just so, uh, I don't know, it's fun to look at, I guess. Um, but what I want to talk about here is the new feature, Color Transfer. Now that's down here in the Creative menu. And the idea behind this is to give you, uh, you input a reference image. And that could be any image from anywhere. It could be one of your own, own photos, which is what I'll do in this example. But it could also be a movie poster. You could screenshot somebody else's photo from Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And you can use that as a reference photo. And all it's doing, as the name implies, is transferring that color look from one photo to your, uh, your target photo, which is the photo that you're editing. So I'm going to open Color Transfer. The first thing you do is your reference selection. This is, hey, what's my reference photo? You click on that, and there's a few built in. You can, of course, click the plus sign to add your own. I've already done that. I've got this photo here that I'm kind of highlighting. It was also shot in Madeira, a different sunrise, a different morning, and it was prior to sunrise. So it had kind of that magenta look overall. I'm going to go ahead and choose that as my reference image, and it's going to take a moment, and it has to apply color transfer. You see that happening down here in the bottom. And in fairness, it might take a minute, depending on how big the image is and how much needs to be done and also how dissimilar the images are. But once it goes through and does its kind of AI magic, it will apply the color look from your reference image to your target or your current photo image. And there you go. That has now been applied. So if I show you the before, there it is, a little bit warmer sunrise and that sort of thing. And after, there you go. It looks a lot more like a bit of a magenta. Now, that's too much for this scene because the sun's coming up. You would expect it to be warmer. So you've got all these customization sliders. And I will come back and do a vi video about all this and show you a little bit more detail. But the first thing I want to do is bring the amount down. I just think it's too much. But that, going in at 26% instead of defaulting to like 60, I think it was at, it's a lot more gentle implementation. And I love that look. So that gives me a nice before and after. So before, quite a bit warmer, overall kind of golden tones. And the after, picking up a little, little bit of that magenta, which I'm a fan of. You don't have to like magenta. Uh, but this is a neat way to go sort of mimic uh, the look that you like in other photos based on the color scheme in that photo. And you've got lots of different things here, including match similar objects colors. And so that's going to take things like of the sky, match it to the sky so that it blends a little bit more smoothly and a little bit more consistently overall. But this is a really cool feature that I think people are going to love. So that's before and after. And I should have said before I started the uh, video, I'd already done some basic edits to this photo, which are super contrast and uh, develop raw just to brighten the photo a bit. And then as you know, uh, as you just saw, I added color transfer. So one more time before and after. That's a quick way to really adjust and kind of change the mood of the scene overall. You saw that difference there. Uh, but that's color transfer, and it's really powerful, and it's really fun. And of course, this is AI-based, right, where it's figuring things out. But now what I want to do is talk about color masking. This is a powerful tool. I've used it in other products for quite a while, and I'm super happy that they added this to Luminar Neo. I think you're going to love it as well. As the name applies, it is a mask based on color values. So I'm opening Develop for a second time on this photo. I'm open Masking, uh, the Masking menu. As you can see, they grouped the masking tools. So you've got the brush and your two gradients. You've got new color masking and luminosity masking, my two favorite things ever. They're grouped together. And then you've got these AI tools here. So I'm going to go into Color Masking, and it's going to analyze the photo. And as you see, it says, click on the photo to sample color. So you have this eyedropper, and this eyedropper is what allows you to pick the color. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this blue up here. So I'm going to give it one click, and you'll see it's picked out everything that it considers to be in that color range. Now the slider here gives you the options of either decreasing that range, which means it's going to cover less, the mask is going to cover less of that blue, uh, or in this case, I'm actually going to go a little bit to the right. I'm going to go to 75. It defaults to 50, and that's going to increase the reach 
of what it's considering blue. Uh, and you will notice that the uh, little dot right here shows you the color that's been selected. So what I want to do is slightly darken those blues and make them a little bit more saturated. So it's a little bit like adding a polarizer to the sky and a little bit of saturation, or excuse me, temperature change. And hey, why not? I'll add a little vibrance while I'm at it. So what I've done is just quickly isolated the blues in the sky and shifted those tones, made them a little bit darker, a little bit more vibrant, and a little bit more blue. So before and after, really powerful, really quick. And of course, I'm gonna go do this again. I'm gonna open develop, open masking, and go into color, analyze as a photo, and again, click to sample color. I'm gonna grab this orange one here. So click that, and you will see it identifies a fair amount of the photo, especially the foreground, because that's where the golden light is really hitting. Notice though, it didn't pick up all the sky, and that's because the range, it's kind of identifying this as more of a brown versus an orange. So I can increase it. If I go to 100, I'm getting a lot more of the foreground, but still not every single bit, which I like. It's kind of gentle in terms of its application. And if I drop it, you can see it, it's condensing that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 50. And in this case, I just want to brighten that a little bit. So I'm going to bring a little bit more light into those areas and maybe give it a, just a tad of warmth, maybe like a one, not much. Just trying to make a few minor changes that you can uh, view easily in this video. So before and after. That was how quick and easy I was able to isolate those little areas, and that's because of this color masking. So when you start adding up all the things that this update has, I'm personally very impressed. I love it, and I know that there's more coming, so they're continuing to innovate. So that's what this update is all about with the color masking and the color transfer feature, plus all the catalog updates. And then if you back up six months or so at earlier this year when they added luminosity masking and water enhancer ai and twilight enhancer ai if you look at all the things that have gone into luminar you can see that it's becoming an incredibly robust and powerful editor that gives you a lot of creative capability but also a lot of control it's it's finding a really nice balance it's striking a really nice balance i think between those two things which is what i love about photo editing being able to control my image but being able to be creative as well. Luminar Neo brings that all together. This stuff it is, I think, unbelievable. It's fantastic. I love it. I think you're going to love it as well. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon diving in a little bit deeper into some of these new features. Let me know what comments and questions you have. I'll be back really soon, my friends. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. And until next time, adios.